Sneaker Bats! Now that we got your attention, today we'll be talking about Gamera versus Gauss. Where's my hat? Volcanic eruptions occur in Japan, and one on Mount Futago attracts a hungry Gamera. Gamera's arrival is witnessed by a young boy, Eichi. A research team is sent out to discover if Gamera survived the volcano. Near a rural village on Mount Futago, an expressway is being paved, but progress is slowed when the local villagers refuse to sell their land. As they investigate the mountain, researchers' helicopter is downed by a sonic beam coming from the mountain. Afterwards, the bodies of the researchers are not found and the disappearance is stated to be unrelated to the eruptions. A frustrated reporter decides to go to the mountain and find out for himself what's going on. You know, I've seen a lot of movies involving giant monsters and that doesn't sound like a very good idea. Well, you think? Yeah. Yeah, I do think. Am I, am I not allowed to think? Some days, not really. The villagers continue to oppose the road construction despite the danger that the volcano poses to them. It turns out that the villagers are conspiring in hopes of getting a bigger profit from the construction company for their land. Wait a minute! That guy has my hat! No, he doesn't. They even go as far as trashing the workers' barracks. As they clean up their barracks, the workers spot a strange glowing coming from the mountain. Suspecting that the villagers don't want them finding gold, which apparently shines sometimes, the foreman and some workers investigate the glow. There's gold in them mountains. We'll be rich! Rich, I tell you, man! Rich! Having climbed the mountain, the reporter films the strange glowing light and meets H.E. Appealing to the kid's love of Gamera, the reporter gets Eiji to lead him up further up the mountain and they find the cave emanating strange glowing light. Inside the cave, the pair see a shadow and an earthquake occurs. The reporter abandons the kid but finds himself a meal for a massive bat-like creature. Did you hear what I said? It's a strange bat-like creature. Alright. As the workers investigate the mountain, Eichi manages to get out of the cave without being crushed. The bat monster emerges from the mountain, and Eiji is pinned to the ground by a falling rock as the bat reaches for the trapped boy. Gamera also emerges from the mountain, and the bat thing picks up the boy in its claw. The bat uses a sonic beam slicing into Gamera's flesh, but the turtle continues to fight back, knocking the boy from his hands. Gamera catches H.E. and after driving the bat back into the mountain, gives the boy a ride on his back before d delivering him to safety. This is actually the first time that Gamera lives up to his whole friend of all children title. What about the scene in the first movie? where he cut the little boy. It could have been an accident. This time is clearly deliberate. Eiichi tells the defense force about the battle between Gamera and the bat monster, giving it the name Gauss. A scientist explains Gauss' sonic beam in extensive detail, revealing that Gauss is unable to turn its head. He also states that the recent earthquakes awakened the bat and that Gauss must be dealt with before it can attack a city. Well, duh, people. The defense force bombs the mountain, hoping to destroy the Gauss, but it retaliates. The attack is called off and H.E. believes that Gamera is hiding in the sea, healing his wound arm, which he is. How did he know? How did that little boy know? Smart kid. Oh. At home, the boy notices electricity acting weird. A bunch of horses run past his home, and Gauss rises from his slumber. At a cattle ranch, not a single cow remains, and the rancher is determined to kill Gauss. A villager claims the road workers brought bad luck and, as a result, caused Gauss to emerge. You know, for 
the guy who clearly stole my hat, and no one will question that at all, you're not very smart. It's not your hat. The villagers are now concerned about the fate of the village and tell the headman, H's grandfather, that they intend to sell their land to the developers. The headman tries to convince them to remain steadfast in the hopes that they can make more money for their land. It's worth a try. At the construction site, most of the workers have left. As work has stopped, Gauss's appearance raises safety concerns. H.E. visits the barracks, revealing that Gauss doesn't come out of his cave during the daytime. The foreman relays its bit of info to the defense force. At night, the foreman explains to the remaining workers that they have to keep watch for Gauss and warn everyone if the monster emerges. Electronics go haywire and Gauss emerges from his cave once more. Spotting the signal, the defense forces battle Gauss, but the bat uses its powerful wings to fan the tanks away. Gauss leaves the mountain to attack a nearby city, eating citizens and using his sonic beam to slice things to pieces, including a car. Gamma returns for a rematch as the battle in the air, Gauss releases a yellow gas that closes Gamma's limb holes. After crashing, Gamera bites Gauss's foot and the sun raises, Gauss is forced to slice it off his own toes to escape. That was a very interesting round two. Let's bring on round three. The severed toes of Gauss are found, but by the time the police arrive, they've shrunk. The toes are taken to a lab for study in hopes of finding a way to stop Gauss. Back in his cave, Gauss regrows his severed digits. I'm not gonna lie, I like the effects that they use. Experiments reveal that ultraviolet light causes the toes to grow even smaller. With his toes regrown, Gauss is ready for action once again. At a meeting, Gauss's weakness is fully revealed, but the Defense Force cannot construct a device to utilize UV light in any effective way. H.E. arrives at the meeting and asks about the fight. When the scientist overhears H.E.'s mention turning in reference to his ride on Gamera, this sparks an idea. A plan is concocted to utilize a spinning pedestal to disorient Gauss and use fake blood to lure the giant bat to it. As work on the pedestal progresses, the villagers take the foreman aside and agree to sell their land for construction. You're also going to try and sell my hat, you little hat thief. It's not your gosh darn hat. Dang it. However, with everything that's happened, construction is stalled and the headman is upset with the other villagers over their attempt to sell out. As night falls, the fake blood pump is started and Gauss is lured by the scent. Once Gauss is on the platform, they begin to rotate it waiting patiently for the sun to rise. Unfortunately, one of the stations powering the pedestal short out and allows Gauss to destroy the pedestal and escape. Well, that happens from time to time, especially in these kaiju films. The villagers are upset with the headman, revealing that the road construction is being diverted because the village held out for too long. Aichi comes to his grandfather's defense. Later, Aichi draws a picture of Gamera, claiming that if they burn the forest, Gamera will come to kill Gauss. Having overheard this, his grandfather proposes a plan to the defense force, knowing full well that doing so will ruin the land, admitting that his greed got the better of him before. Fires are started across the mountain, burning the forest, and Gauss attempts to put out the fire with his yellow vapor, but more fires are started. Gamera arrives, lured by the fire, and battles with Gauss. The fight goes back and forth. Gauss drops Gamera from a large height, and Gamera plugs Gauss's mouth with a rock. The two battle until the sun rises. Weakened by the sun, Gamera drags Gauss into the volcano, defeating the bat monster. The winner of the kaiju battle, Gamera. In the aftermath, the village headman tells the others that the plans to divert the road were just a rumor and that the construction will continue soon. 
Gamera flies off into the sunrise with a song playing him out. Gamera vs. Gauss, one of the more memorable Gamera films. Yeah, and Gauss would go on to be one of Gamera's most recurrent villain kaiju throughout his entire series. Wait, I thought you lost your hat. Turns out it was just on the floor next to the couch. Oh well, I'm Tank. And I'm Protomet. See ya. Bye.